So let's move on here. We're going to talk about the normal distribution, which we already have discussed, right? So we know this empirical rule where we've sort of figured out this 6895, where we can say if we go out certain standard deviations away from the mean, a certain uh, percentage of all uh, observations fall in there. So this is sort of the same idea. When we say percentage, of, we're really talking about sort of the same thing as probability, right? The probability of something happening. But now we're going to say, we're going to take a look, different look and say, well, really what we mean is we want to say, you know, what's the probability of some, some event happening in the normal distribution uh, that's smaller than a certain amount. So all the way from sort of negative infinity out to our point, essentially what we're at. So let's talk about this. So normal distribution is one of the most commonly used uh, continuous distribution. And the reason why will come up in a couple weeks, but it's really because when we start taking samples from uh, from some some any kind of distribution, the mean of those samples. If we were to take samples over and over and over and over again, every time we take a sample, we take an average, and then take those averages and then plot those averages as a histogram. Those will always become almost always become normally distributed. We'll talk at length about this in a couple weeks, but it's pretty amazing that this happens. So this is actually the whole basis of inferential statistics is because. Uh, because of what we call the central limit theorem. It's going to come up. Let's stop talking about it. Okay, so let's just figure this out. First of all, let's draw a little picture again of the normal distribution just to help us get it. So we remember, you know, we all remember this. Oh, wow, this is one of the worst normal distributions drawn of all time. But it's a bell-shaped thing. It doesn't look anything like the one I just drew. Let's draw a better bell. But if we split it right down the middle, we talked about this already. This is symmetric, right? Symmetric, which means half of the stuff is on one side and half is on the other side. Symmetric. All right, so we could say that there's 50% of all observations on this side and 50% on uh, this side. And theoretically, these tails, which I didn't draw very well, these tails actually go to infinity on this side and to negative infinity. So theoretically, they go forever, right? Uh, but we already know that you know within uh, after, after about three standard deviations, the chance of something happening beyond that is really really small. It can happen, but it's really small. But just to remind us that uh, that's the case. And then here in the middle, we have you know we have our little mu guy, which is the mean, mean. And it turns out for normal distribution, this is also the median and the mode. So all three of these things are the same thing for normal distribution. Mu is what this says. Mu, right? All right, so that's good. So let's uh, let's kind of move on down here. This page. So here's our first equation. All right, so the normal probability density function can be expressed in this way. All right. <laughs> yeah. So first of all, let's uh, let's sort of see. We already we just talked about this. It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. Right? So y can be in between these two. So that we can understand. No problem. These little ups, you know, eights on the side. It's infinities. So here we got some funky like e's, all right? We got pi, mm, pi, pi. But the ones we really care about here is this guy, right? We know what that is, and we know what this guy is. We don't really care a whole lot about what's going on here. But because we got this e and we got this pi, we're getting some sort of curve. So remember, pi is used in some, when, we, when you uh, express circles. So this is going to make the curves happen. Uh, and then e sort of helps out in that, in that regard, too. So this is something that if you're taking like a theoretical math-based statistics class, you're going to have to learn how to derive this, but we do not want to do that in this class, so we won't. All right, so, but here we got our mean, and then remember this guy right here, this is sigma, what does he mean? Sigma, he's the standard deviation, remember that? The standard deviation of the distribution. So mu is the mean, standard deviation, so within these two things, and we'll see in a second, we, everything else is controlled. So remember, we talk a PDF, probably density function is a PDF. Uh, so that's what this is. A PDF is a symmetric bell-shaped curve. So it looks like this is a very better picture than what I drew. And this, so these numbers here just represent the distance from, you know, from this point to this point, right? So there's exactly 34% from one standard deviation, uh, for, sorry, from the mean to one standard deviation on one side. Right, and then another 34 on the other side. So before we talked about the empirical rule, we said it was 60, uh, 65 or something like that, right? Well, really what we meant was if we take one standard deviation on both sides, right? So we can this is doing the same thing. It's just saying, well, I look, we just look on one side and look on the other side. And notice that they're exactly the same, right? And if we go out, this is 0 0.1359, this is 0.1359. It's exactly the same. And why is that? It's because it's exactly symmetric. So I actually only need half of the distribution. And then I know what the other half is. There's no problem. I can figure it out. 
So that's just something to remember. It helps us think about uh, things going on in the future. All right. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so two parameters, mu is the mean, and, and the sigma, the standard deviation, fully describes what distributions look like in all cases. So here's a picture of uh, you know, a, a normal distribution, and all we do is change the mean. Right, so here's the mean of 0 is black, mean of 1, blue, mean of 2. So you can see that they look exactly the same. They've just been shifted over. So that's all. A change in the mean just moves the whole thing over. Right? It looks exactly the same. We're just moving stuff around. The second one is the standard deviation, and it controls sort of the uh, profile of the curve, right? So sort of the, it, whether it's really pointy or whether it's really spread out. So all three of these are all normal distributions, right? And uh, the first one, the black one here, is with uh, one standard deviation. The blue one is with a half a standard deviation, right? So if I have a smaller standard deviation, uh, the curve sort of shrinks in, and then three is with three standard deviation. It kind of spreads out a little bit more. So this three doesn't look bell-shaped, but it still is, right? It still is symmetric exactly, and all the same things that we found before are the same, right, as far as the, the number of standard deviations away. It just means that it's spread out further. All right, so you may have taken a stats class before where you uh, have tried to figure out the probability of something happening in a, uh, in a normal distribution, which we're going to do in the next page. And the, the traditional way to do this is to find a z-score, which we figured out how to do week one in our class. So we know how to do a z-score. It's just uh, you know some x minus the, the mean divided by the standard deviation. And what is the z-score? It means how far is some point away from the mean in terms of standard deviations, right? In terms of standard deviations. Right, and it can be negative or it can be positive. And what this really does, though, and we didn't talk about this, is it actually standardizes uh, any point you have for any, any normal distribution. Standardize, what does that mean? Standardize means it puts it into a, standard, in, into a normal distribution that has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. Right? So we could actually go through and show this mathematically, but we don't care too much. This is what it does. And, and this is actually kind of cool because then we can look in the back of any book that we have, right, any textbook, any, sorry, any stats textbook for that matter, and find what we call a Z table. And the Z table will give us probability. So we're going to do that in just a second if I can find my textbook, which I probably left in my saxophone office. Yeah, we'll find another way to do that. That's okay. So, uh, however, we'll show you how to do that, but really Excel will just do this for us like a piece of cake. We don't have to convert it into a z-score. We just do it. So I want you to learn how to do it the other way, most likely because uh, in other classes, you're going to have teachers who are going to say, ah, oh, go find the z-score or something like that. And you're going to need to know what that means. Uh, however, uh, you should just do it in Excel. Yeah, there you go. You know my preference. So that's, uh, that's all there is to it. So this is how it's going to look in Excel. Let me see. I'm pretty sure I skipped over some stuff. No, not yet. Okay. So we're going to, uh, let's draw a normal distribution right here. Whether we use the z-score or the norm, uh, uh, Excel, this is what's going to happen. All right. So we have this normal distribution, something looks like that. Only it looks better than that one. And here's our mean, all right, mu. And then we're going to give it some point, right, uh, for a z, like let's say a z of 1.2. That's something like right here, 1.2. And we're going to say, what's the probability uh, we're going to, well, well, let me just tell you, this is what the, the books give us. And so does, uh, so does Excel. It gives us the probability of everything left of that point. All right? Again, color, so good. Let's get a thicker pen. Color, everything left of some point. All right? So in the back of the book, uh, if I go to a z-score table, which we'll do in just a second, and look up the value for 1.2. What it's going to give me is it's going to give me the probability of uh, uh, a probability uh, less than 1.2, right? So it's going to say the probability that x, some random x, is less than or equal to 1.2, right? And then it's also it's given, and then a normal distribution looks a little bit different. Normal distribution is an n instead of a u, but we do the same thing with mu is our first function and the comma standard deviation, right? So just like with the uniform distribution, we put two numbers. It's the it's the, you know the smaller and the bigger. And here we put the mean and the standard deviation. With those two things, we know everything we need to know about uh, 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 this normal distribution. So in this case, we say it's a normally distributed with mean of zero and standard deviation of one. 
this right here is what we call the standardized, uh, the standard normal distribution, right? From zero, with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. If we know that, if we can say that that's given, then this right here is actually a z-score, right? So that's all that means. All right, so if we ask this question, then we're going to get, uh, we're going to find the answer in the back of the book, or we're going to use Excel to find the answer. So no problem. Uh, so in Excel, how do we do this in Excel, and then we'll, we'll jump back to the book. We're going to do this back and forth all over the place. In Excel, in Excel uh, we just take a normal random variable y with mean mu and standard deviation of sigma. We can find the probability of y is less than less than, you know, big Y less than, than little y by typing norm dist y sigma uh, and one. So this can work for any distribution, any normal distribution. So I can put any mu in here and any sigma. I don't have to convert it to this guy right here, right? So that's why we like uh, using uh, using Excel because we don't have to do this conversion, right? It'll just automatically do this. By the way, I kind of skipped over this, but you could do this. All we're doing here is taking the area under this curve. This is calculus. That's all we're doing. So if you, you know, if you were really good, you could take our uh, ugly equation up here. Where'd it go? Here it is, right here. And all we do is we take the uh, the integral of this from two points, right? So in the case of this one, we take the integral from negative infinity to 1.2. And then go, and then we do it because we're really good. And then we can pump it out, and we get the answer. Well, that's actually not that easy. This is a pretty hard equation to take an integral over, and so that's why things are printed in the back of the book, right? Of every single textbook for the past hundred years. So no one actually takes integrals of these anymore. And in fact, I wouldn't even try it if I were you. It's really ugly. And and then for that matter, Excel doesn't even, you know, again the next step doesn't even make us put it into this this standard normal. So that's nice. All right, so, but here, even with the norm disk function, very important to draw pictures of probabilities because the norm disk function only takes that left tail area, right? It only goes to the left, and we want uh, other types of areas. So sometimes we're going to ask for something that's greater than, or sometimes we're going to take some sort of ranges. So this, so that's important. So the other thing we can do is this function called norm inverse function. So the norm inverse function is just the opposite of the norm dist function. You can do this with a textbook, too. It's a little bit trickier. But this is, uh, and we're going to work a problem in just a second. This is the case where we want some percentile of a normal distribution. Say, I want to know the point of the 90th percentile in this normal distribution, right? So instead of saying, I want to know the probability of uh, you know, 1.2, I, I then I say, well, I want to know the probability, I want to know what the point is if my probability is 90%, right? And then it will go and find the point for us. Uh, and it looks something like this. So I find that I tell the probability, give me the give it the mean and the standard deviation, and it will give me the point on the distribution. So what I mean by give me the point, so, yeah, let's draw a little picture. i got to get better at drawing normal distributions. Here we go, normal distribution. And let's say we want to find the 30th percentile, essentially. So we know the 30th percentile is like somewhere over here. All right, so here, let's say we want to find the 30th percentile. So where, that, what that means is that this thing I color, is 30%, right? 30% probability, or 30% of this entire this entire curve, right? This entire curve, everything under this curve equals one, right? If I sum it all up, equals one. So what that means is this other chunk over here is 70%, right? So this 30%, this is 70%. If I put it in this norm inverse function, it tells me the value in terms of my uh, in terms of my x, right? If this is x of this point. Right, whatever that point is right there, it will tell me what it is. Right, so this sometimes comes in handy. We have a problem coming up that will that, that, that hopefully will help us solidify what this means. So here's some examples. Suppose that a gas station, so remember our old gas station that was uniformly distributed. Now we're going to say, ah, it's actually normally distributed with a mean of 1,000 gallons and a standard deviation of 100 gallons. So how do we write this? In shorthand, we say normal distribution with mean of 1,000, comma, Standard deviation of 100, something like that. So this is our shorthand, just to help us remember. The station ma uh, manager just opened the station for business and notes that there's exactly 1,100 gallons of regular gasoline. All right, so he knows that uh, you know any given day the amount of gas that's used uh, is a little bit different. It's normally distributed, like so. You know sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. You know on a really good day he's going to sell a lot, and on a, on a not so good day he's going to sell less. And so he wants to know whether he's going to have enough gas because he's not going to be able to refill until later uh, later in the day after the business is closed. So essentially he wants to know, is there enough gas to satisfy today's demand? Right? 
so this question is sort of hard to tell, uh, you know, in this in this description, and usually it'll be less vague than this. But really, what he wants to know is the probability that he's going to run out of gas, right? So, well, really, let's we could do that. But to start out with, let's ask the probability that he won't run out of gas. So, how would we write that in terms of our notation? We would say the probability that x is you know less than or equal to 1100. Oops, 1100. Right. So that's the same as saying this would be 1100. That's the same as saying he's not going to run out of gas. What's the probability that he's not going to run out of gas? Right. That there's going to be enough in his tank to get through. Yeah. So and sometimes it's going to be on the right side. Uh, other times, and then let's finish up. Given we'll draw in a picture, a normal distribution n of 1000, comma 100. Okay. Let's see what. Let's draw this. See what it looks like. Okay, here's my normal distribution. Oh, wow, that one was not very good. Here's my mean. What was my mean? Well, my mean is 1,000. And then I have some standard deviations. I know there's one about there, and there's one about there, and there's one about there. These are standard deviations away. right? And actually, I know here the standard deviations are 100 away. So this one is, what, 1,100? This one is 1,200. This one is 1,300. And then going this way, this guy's 900, 800, and 700. All right, so what is it I'm after here? Well, I want to know the probability in this, you know, in this picture of uh, x is less than 1,100. This would be 1,100, right? That's what's in our problem, 1,100. 1,100. Well, let's find 1,100. Here's 1,100. Draw the sort of line straight up. And I want to go less than, so this is how I remember. I look at the little arrow, which way it's pointing, right? It's pointing to the left. So then I know I can just fill in the left. That's what I want. Less than. So you remember in kindergarten or in uh, elementary school, you learned about the alligator. Whatever it's, it's eating, whatever's bigger. This is the same idea. All right, so this is what we're after, right? We want to know the probability of this side. Okay. So how do we do this? Well, it's a piece of cake in Excel, so let's write this. Let's change colors here. In Excel, uh, we can do this easy. So we just type equal, and then write the word norm dist. Right? And 2010 is norm dot dist. It's exactly the same, no problem. So they're both the same. You can do both in 2010. And then we're supposed to put in some x some mean and some standard deviation. So the x here is, you know, the point right here, 1100. So our first term is 1100. Comma, what's our mean? 1000. Comma, what's our standard deviation? 100. And then we just have to put in this number 1, right? This number 1 just tells us that we want a cumulative distribution, which means cumulative from negative infinity all the way to our point, right? Cumulative We'll never not put one for normal distribution. So in some other times, we might put a zero in here for a binomial distribution in a minute, but we're never not going to put one for norm. So always put one in here. Or you can type in, I think, true. It's the same thing. All right, so this gives us an answer of point. You should try this, but I'm not going to do it now. 0.8413. So you should pause the video go try this. Make sure you can get this right. So after you pause, what does this mean? Well, this means that this chunk over here is 84 point one three percent of our of our entire area under the curve so by default that means this is whatever's left over right which is another uh, 16 percent or something right so approximately 16 percent over here one minus this gives us how much is left over here so we could say actually from this we can say well there's an 84.13 percent chance that you're not going to run out of gas Equivalent, equivalently, we could also say that there's a roughly 16% or 1 minus that percent chance that you will run out of gas, right? That's exactly what that means, is that if we have a normal, if, if our, our daily gasoline demand is really this, and you really only have this much in there, then we can say what we just said. So, very cool. So now, let's do this with the Z table. I'm going to have to pause and go find a Z table. One second. Don't go anywhere. Okay, I'm back. So, uh, so let's figure this out with the z table. I got one prepped and ready for us to look at. 
First, we have to convert this, though, into a z-score, right? This 1100 into a z-score because we're in the wrong distribution. In order to use the z-score, this we have to convert this into a normal distribution with mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. Well, that's a piece of cake. So how do we do that? Uh, well, let's change, let's see, with a z-table. First, make a z-score. So first step, find the z-score. Find the Z score. You could probably figure this one out in your head. You probably already figured this out. Uh, so anyway, how do we do this? We find, if you remember, it's uh, it's our X, whoops, X minus mu over sigma. So in this case, this is uh, 1100 is our X minus 1000 is our mu over 100, which actually just comes to what? That equals 1. So that's, we'll look at the picture that we have over here. So exactly one standard deviation uh, away from the mean, right? So like here's a thousand. We decided that each of these marks is a standard deviation. Well, here's 1100. It's right exactly out there. There's no, it doesn't have to be there, right? So this is a simple version just so that we can play with it. So once we know what the z-score is, then, so here's the z-score. So z-score equals one. Then really what, what we're going to do we're going to change this to now we say, well, now we know the probability, and then we can rewrite this. The z is less than 1, and we don't have to say a given, because if we were talking about z's, then everybody knows that we mean a standard normal uh, distribution with a mean 0 and a standard deviation of 1. But we could write this of given n 0, comma 1, right? But it's the same thing. So this is now equivalent. It's the exact same thing. Those mean the same thing. So then what do we do? Well, uh, we find our, uh, we can look in the back of the book. This is there. Or we find it, we just Google Z table. That's what I did. And I found this. So this is thanks Illinois State University, Econ 148, Applied Economic Statistics. So how do you read these? So over here we have a Z, right? That's what this is, a Z. And it goes from, this one goes from negative 3.4 uh, and then it goes all the way to positive 3.4. Remember, a z is just the number of standard deviations away from the mean. And we know that there isn't much chance of something bigger than 3, you know, three you know, in this case, bigger than 3 standard deviations away from the mean. It doesn't happen very often, so that's why this doesn't get a much bigger than that. And then what's along the side here? Well, how do we read this is like this one would be negative 3.4, and then if you want to go out several decimal places, you just do it out here. So this was negative 3.40, negative 3.41. We just find the intersection over there. Negative 3.41. If we have, like, say we have, uh, if we want to find a z-score of 1.62, how would we do that? Well, we first find 1.6. Here's 1.6, and then we go to 2 right here. 1.62 is right there, I believe. Yep. All right. So for our problem, we find the z-score of 1. Right. So then we just want to find what the uh, equivalent of that is. Well, we just find 1. Here's 1. 0. 0.0000. That's what we want. So it's right here. 0. 0.8413, which is exactly the, what we found with, uh, with Excel. Right. 0. 0.8413. So we're golden there. All right. All right, so that's cool. So if we want to do a z-score, uh, we first have to convert our x into a z and then go look it up on the table. But we have to remember that just like it, with the norm dist function, it only gives us what's left. So it's the left of the table, the left tail side, right? So from negative infinity into uh, all the way up to our point. All right, so let's look. I think the next set of notes uh, is going to sort of talk us through how to do this if that's not the case. Uh, actually, before that, let's do this inverse function. At what amount of gas can the manager be 95% sure he won't run out? Right. So this is this inverse function we're thinking about. So now the you know the manager sitting there saying, oh that's pretty that's pretty bad. I have a 16% chance of running out. That's really pretty bad. Uh, how much gas should I have sort of in the end of the day every day where I know that 95% of the time I'm not going to run out? So this might come in come in handy, you know, uh, for those of you who do lots of supply type of stuff. This is how we make sure that we have sort of the right amount of things. It's the same uh, same kind of problem. So in Excel, how do we write this? Well, this is a piece of cake in Excel. Again, if we have this normal distribution, uh, what was it of a thousand, comma one hundred? Well, then we just say equals norm inverse. 
norm inv. And we put in our probability we want 0 0.95, comma, 1000, comma, 100. And that's it. So plug that in and see what you get. I uh, didn't write it down. So well, let's just uh, let's just do it real fast. I think I got Excel open here somewhere. So what is this? this is like your final exam? Huh. Maybe we better do this somewhere else, huh? Okay. Oh. Okay. So let's do it right here. So. equals norm inverse, there it is, whoops, norm inverse of 0.95 is our probability. The mean is going to be 1,000, and the standard deviation equals 100. Enter. Uh, 1,164 gallons. Okay. 1164 point something gallons. So he's actually pretty close. What did he have, 1100 gallons? So he's only about 64 short of being 95%. Sure, he's not going to run out of gas. 64 gallons. So that's really only like a, that's what, like a three tanks, maybe four tanks uh, of gas. All right. So he's only about four cars short of being 95% confident. So maybe he doesn't feel so bad anymore. Okay. So that's how we answer these kinds of questions, norm inverse. Again, we can draw this picture to see what this means. All right? Wow, bad picture. We say we want to know what this point is right here, such that everything to the right is 95%. Everything to the left, sorry. Everything over here is 95%. Color this all in. This is 95% of the time. So again, and then by default, whatever is left over here in this tail, this green area, is 5%, right? Because everything has to sum up to 1, right? So this inverse function is going to tell us, though, let's say this, this axis right here is gallons of gas. The inverse function will tell us what point right here is such that 95% is left and 5% is right. This is how we do that. All right, so let's move on a little bit. So three types of problems that we run into. So first one, find the probability that's less than some point. This is what we've already done. What's the probability of selling less than 1,100 gallons of gas? Well, that's, let's just draw a picture real fast. So here's 1,100. 1,100. And we care about what's to the left of it, right? So there's less than 1,100 gallons, less than 1,100 gallons, it looks like this. So we know how to do this. This is just the regular norm dist. This is what norm dist gives us, or this is what the z-score tables give us, z-score tables. Okay. So back up here, what's the probability of a greater than some point? All right, so what's the probability of selling more than 1,100 gallon gas? Well, we actually solved that earlier. How did we do that? Do you remember how we solved that? Zoom up a little bit. It was up here. We decided it was 16%. How did we do that? Do you remember how we did that? Oh, yeah, I remember. We took this 84.13, 84%, and we just subtracted from 1, 1 minus that, and that gave us 16. Because we remember that everything underneath this curve has to equal 1. Ah, okay. So we can actually do that. So we can just solve this, and then just say 1 minus that, and it gives us this, right? So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's draw this picture. First, see what we mean. Man, my normal distributions are getting worse. Oh, whoops. That's okay. This is our mean. Here's 1100. 1100. But now my problem, and I gotta make sure I read the problem and know what I'm being asked, right? Because if I don't realize what's being what's being asked for, I'm gonna get the problem wrong. So make sure I draw the picture. And say what's the probability of selling more than selling more selling more than so this is a probability that x is greater than 1100 so here the look which way the arrow is pointing right greater than this is an arrow you think of that arrow is pointing that way 
that's the side of the distribution I want I care about greater than here all right so if I'm gonna do this how do I do this well in Excel I just say one minus so we figured this out earlier norm dist Uh, and then we do it just like we did before, 1100, comma, I'm going to write a space, 1000, comma, 100, comma, 1. Like that. And this should be, we figured this out approximately, I think it's like, it's, it's going to be less than 16%, but around 16%. So you should try it and figure out what it is. It should be around that. So what does this mean? Well, let's break this. This, normal dist, this norm dist right here, this is what we just did, right? And then we just take 1 and minus that. Because remember, everything under this curve has to sum up to 1. So this part is just what's ever left over. So that's this is just how we do it. And we do the same thing with the z-score. So if we're going to do the z-score method, z-score, then we say, well, we go find the z-score, and we say 1, whoops, 1 minus the z-score, whatever it gives us on the z-score table. Not 1 minus the z-score, but what gives us on the z-score table. z-score table results. All right, finally, last one, find the probability that something is happening between two points. Let's try this out and see what I mean by this. All right, here's a normal distribution. Here's 500 gallons. And here's 1,300 is probably over here somewhere, 1,300. So what's the probability of selling between 500 and 1,300 gallons? So let's color this in between, between, in between, right, in the middle. Now this one's a little trickier, but it's not too bad. So we just sort of have to think about, again, this is sort of geometry, so think about how do we figure out the area under the curve totally has to equal one. And we can say from here, from negative infinity to here, we can figure that out, right? And we can also figure out from negative infinity to 500. And that's the part we don't care about, right? So let's clear this. We actually want to erase this. We don't want that. All right, so don't want the red. Okay, what I colored in red, right? We don't want that. So how can we do this? Well, we can find everything left of 1,300, and then from that, subtract everything left of 500. And that what, what will be left over is just this part in the middle. So that's exactly what we do. So we say equals norm dist. Oh, we got to help her. She's coming to help us. Come over here, Nora. Say hi. Norm dist of 1300, comma. This is what we do for fun at our house. 1300, comma. What was it? 1000? Yeah. Comma 100. And from that, we subtract norm dist. Just a second, buddy. I'm almost done. 500, comma. 1000, comma 100. All right, so what is this going to do? This is going to subtract. We're going to go figure out this, basically this red stuff, and subtract it from all this gray. The gray is actually going to go from negative infinity to there. All right, that's it. I think we're going to have dinner now. Dad, why did you... All right, dinner's not quite ready. So let's talk this through just a little bit more. We're going to do a, uh, several of these uh, next time in class, actually do them in Excel and figure out what this means. But hopefully this sort of uh, well, helps you understand what's going on when we can ask these sort of questions uh, if we assume a normal distribution. I think this next uh, question we actually already answered above, so I don't know why, but for some reason in my notes it showed up twice. But uh, so, so we just have to figure out what, what kind of question it's being asked, uh, and then we just plug it in. It's just a plug and chuck. So once we figure out how to use this norm dysfunction, there's nothing to it. This is really easy, right? All right, so that's the normal